and we are live good morning good morning good morning greetings 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 and happy new year once again good morning good morning greetings greetings happy new year happy new you happy new me come on in come on in we got our first session of 2021 come on in come on in we got demetrius scott in the building down there in moody alabama brenda bondurant josh tovar my man principal out there in texas out there in garland isd good morning good morning crystal brown is in the building come on in folks come on in good morning good morning greetings monique Wat uh, watford janine um wilkins is in the building um dot mckeever retired principal dot mckeever out there in chicago land is in the building alicia mahoney um evelyn man i'm messing up last names gm dacus is in the building Bernice lewis principal sean hurt is in the building we got mario um man that name went so quick michael benton is in the building john herrix is in the building good morning good morning central hicks is in the building rachel joy liz uh, 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 uh ag aguire i'm sorry uh we got ty ford yolanda mckinney is in the building nicole oliver is here hit that share button for me somebody let them know we're on week 36 week 36 uh how many more 15 uh 16 19 my math is off y'all 19 more to go we still got a long way we got principal ronnie harvey in the building principal of the year in the building we got justin browning in the building leah white's here in the building we got a lot of people in the building we fitting a lot of people in the room hit that share button twitter hit that retweet button for me youtube hit that share button we're in the building we're on two platforms on facebook one on twitter one on youtube hit that retweet button hit that share button let them know i don't stop for holidays i don't stop for vacations we did this the day after christmas we we're doing this the day after new year's and whatever other holiday comes up along the way all the way to may we're gonna keep it going melissa jones Chuna's in the building. Jamila Johnson's in the building. Terry Williams is here. Who else is here? Uh, Connie Nelson is in the building. My wife, Kimberly Broughton Cafele, is in the building. We got a lot of people in the building. Keep on hitting that share button. Hit that retweet button. We talking, man, we talking assistant principal leadership for 55 weeks. But, you know, last week I did a special edition. We got Keith Wynn. Keith Hinton, K. Wynn Hint in the building, East Orange, New Jersey. That's home. We did a uh, last week. I did a I did a special session on the resume, and I'm I'm doing a special session today. Dominique is in the building. Uh, Cornica James is in the building. Superintendent Finch is in the building. Cohen Ten is in the building. Rich Watkins is in the building. For those of you who are new. We do shout outs from 1055 to 11 o'clock. So don't worry about it. I'm not going to be shouting out the whole hour. This is just in the beginning. Uh, who else we have here? Venus Ketchum is in the building. Uh, 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 oh, man, I can't make that out. Uh, a down is in the building. I, I think I got it right. I got my cousin in here. Shayla Big Shake Jackson is in the building this morning. Right. Good morning to you, sir. We got Debbie Piles in the building. We got about a minute more to go, and then we're going to get this thing rocking, man. I got so much to talk about. I said we did a I did a special session last week on, um, on, on the resume, and then I'm doing a special today on prepping for the principalship, and I'm going to talk about that um, in a few minutes, in a minute. VP Jay Brown is in the building. DM Early is in the building. Tracy Berry McGee, one of my colleagues, is in the building. Shay Campbell is in the building. Cassandra Harley's in the building. TB Summers in the building. But guess what? 11 o'clock is in the building. So you know what that means. I got to cut off the shout outs now. I appreciate you guys checking in early. Do me a favor. Hit that retweet Twitter. Hit that share button on both Facebook pages. Hit that share button on the YouTube channel. School Leadership Thoughts is the channel. And let's let's get it rocking. It's 11 o'clock. So let me say to you formally, good morning.
Greetings. Happy New Year. Happy New You. And let me tell you something. I, I, I don't know about you. I, I don't know, but I got to speak for me on this one. And as for me, I'm on fire. Y'all didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Let me let me let me tell you that again. I said I'm on fire. Man, it's a new year. It's a new day. We're starting a new week. It's a lot going on out here. Yeah, it went from December 31 to January 1, but the problems of 2020 didn't disappear when, when, when the clock when the clock struck 12. It didn't, they didn't disappear. They're here. And as a matter of fact, things are intensifying. So, so we know that, but I'm not going to let it ex extinguish my fire. See, that's the point. So, so despite what's going on in the world, and 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 I will be in tune with it and I will do whatever I need to do. But I'm not going to let it extinguish my fire. So you can't let it extinguish yours either. So, so let's jump into it. You know I got a quick, quick motivational message. And my, my message is I'm on fire, uh, on fire about the new year to get it right. So again, I'm, on, I'm fired up about the new year, about a new year to get it right. So here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a new year. That means I got a new opportunity. That means you have a new opportunity. See, see, every day, really, when we wake up in the morning, we wake up with a brand new opportunity. Whatever we got wrong the day before, the days before, the weeks before, the months before, the year before, the years before, whatever it is, we wake up in the morning with a new opportunity. We wake up in the morning with a reset to get it right. Right. So here's my new opportunity today. Here's your new opportunity today. So I'm fired up about this new opportunity and I don't have to take it into the year. I can say my new opportunity today on January 2nd, I got a new opportunity from all the mistakes from January 1st. So, so see, that's a mindset. That's an attitude. That's a disposition. I'm saying to you that you got to wake up in the morning with that mindset that despite the challenges of the world, despite the challenges in your environment, in your circle, in your space, in your vicinity, in your home, you still have a new opportunity to build upon it, to correct it, to rectify it, to, to, to make new. So you got that, right? So. That's my short message. Let's jump into my word of the week. My word of the week, consistent with everything I've been saying, is reinvigorate. Once again, reinvigorate. I hope you spent these few days you had off because you only had a few days. But I hope you spent these few days bringing it way down. But while you were down, you were reinvigorating yourself, right? You were getting yourself amped back up. If you weren't doing that then because you just needed to de unplug and detach, now that it's Saturday, now it's time. Maybe that's why you tuned in today. Now it's time to 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 replug, to 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 reattach, to reinvigorate, to get myself back where I need to be, but maybe beyond where I was before, despite the fact I could be 100% virtual, hybrid, whatever it is, I'm still going to bring the best version of myself every day. That's you speaking, that's not me. I'm still going to bring the best version of myself to this work because I'm trying to take it to another level. So that 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 takes me to my topic, but you know I got to say this first before I get there. You know, Joe Clark, I guess he's somewhat of a polarizing figure. I guess somewhat cuz some people are like, "Oh, you know, I ain't into that stuff." And other people, "I really love Joe Clark." Me, I know I'm a principal because of Joe Clark. I went to see that movie Lean on Me. I guess it was 1989. I was a first year uh, teacher. First year teacher, the 88, 89 school year. I'm sitting there watching this movie. My wife, who was my fiance at the time, we get married a few months later. I hit her. I, I said, yo, this is speaking to me. This 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 movie speaking to me. Right. I knew it. I knew on that day in that theater in 1989 that the principalship was my destiny. Right. From watching that movie. I, I tried to be him. I got a video, a whole, uh, I mean, a v, VHS video somewhere in this house. I've been looking all over for it because someone filmed me on my first year as a principal when I used to walk around with a bullhorn because I wanted to be Joe Clark. I mean, I was trying to be this guy, right? 
I just can't find that video. I'm gonna find it and then I'm gonna post it. Just walk in the halls with my with my bullhorn tucked under my arm, like I really needed it, right? I did not need it. I just wanted to look like Joe Clark, right? I mean, it, he was a he was a role model. So I just want to salute Joe Clark this morning, pay tribute because I know it's a lot of people out here in the world that are principals now who are retired principals or aspiring principals. You can say what you want to say about Joe Clark, but somewhere if you peel back them layers and dig deep, there's something about him that has inspired you. I don't care who you are, how much you may be opposed to his style. There's something in there in, in terms of in terms of the good work he did that has inspired you to be the leader that you either are or the leader that you aspire to be in the school. So I, I say salute this morning to Principal Joe Clark, right? Let's get on with it. For those of you who are new, we got an overarching theme called Does My Assistant Principalship Benefit My School Academically? Like, like we're doing this for 55 weeks. For those of you who are new, because I know we got a lot of new names on here. I see names I haven't seen before. So we, we 55 weeks, it was starting off as a, just a COVID 18 week academy, something, give me something else to do while I was doing this downtime with COVID, not expecting it was going to last this long. So it was for 18 weeks. I figured I'd be back on the road in September because we went from May to August and then September, I'll be back in the airplanes. Didn't work out that way. So I extended this thing to 55 weeks. So we're going all the way to May. And I know once I get to May, knowing me as well as I know myself, I know me better than anybody knows me. I know I'm going to go beyond 55 weeks, right? But for now, that's the goal, 55 weeks. That's the projection. So that's where we are. Today's topic, told you this is a special session. I did a special last week on the resume. This is a special this week. It's called Let's Start Prepping for the Principalship Now. Now, now a young lady, when I, when I promoted it on uh, Thursday, a young lady said to me on online, she said, well, I, I'm, I'm not aspiring to be a principal right now. I'm, I'm, I'm content being an assistant principal. I said, well, are you going to, you think one day you may want to be a principal? She said, yeah, yeah, one day. I said, well, here, here's the thing. You don't want to, hear, hear me somebody, put your ear to the speaker on this one. You don't want to get ready. You want to be ready. Somebody didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. See, 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 as we go through life, we we not trying to get ready. We want to be ready because see that same young lady or one of you on the thread right now, somebody might hit you up on the phone or, or an email and, and, and you weren't even expecting a principalship like like but something happened. And they say, uh, uh, Miss So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, uh, we, we need you to step in, like be, become principal like to Monday, this Monday, we need you to assume that. Are you ready? You, you, you can't like now. Oh God, I got to get ready. No, no, it, it's not about getting ready. You got to be ready. Do you hear me? I didn't create that cliche. You all know that, but I use it. So, 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 if I'm talking, if I'm doing a presentation call, let's start prepping for the principalship now. I'm saying maybe it's not your time. Maybe that door's not open just yet, but I'm saying let's start. Let, let's let's start now in the process. So when they call you, I'm ready, right? Right. So so we we you, we ain't gonna use that time to start getting ready. You like yo? I'm ready, right? So I want you to be ready. So with that said, we got Kim Wilson Daniel out there taking notes. She's on Twitter at Kim Wilson Daniel and on Facebook at Kimberly S L Y. Kimberly Wilson Daniel, right? So she'll have the note. She always does. I'm assuming she's on here this morning. I didn't see her name, but I'm assuming she's here. And she'll have the notes. So, but 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 here's what's different about this week. I usually have like 10, 12 questions, and then I got these indicators to go with it. I, I flipped it this week. I got these 12 words, just 12 words, but I got 30 indicators. There, there's there, there 30 self-reflective questions here's the here's what's different well, that's different number one but here's what i want you to do i'm here's what i'm gonna need you guys to do like all of you i need you to write notes i need you to write responses to these questions now i'm not saying in real time do that you don't have that kind of time i want you to process what i'm saying but i want you to get these notes from kim wilson daniel or from me on my page because i repost them but I want you to write the answers to these questions. And then I want you to review these questions and answers on a regular basis, because this is what I'm talking about when I say, I want you to be ready, not get ready. Get ready right now. 
in real time. But when it's time, I want you to be ready, right? So therefore, I'm saying to you, write the take this one. I mean, I hope you take them all seriously, but take this one particularly seriously. I want I spent all week on this. 30 questions. Somebody said 1110, dude. Let's go. So I'm getting ready to do that right now, right? So I call these my 12 essential P's, like the letter P, my 12 essential P's toward um, principal effectiveness. Once again, my 12 essential P's, the letter P, toward principal effectiveness, right? So I got these 12 words. Let's jump at it. Hey, hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Let them know Principal Cafele is getting ready to drop the 12 essential P's for principal effectiveness, right? So let's, let's go. I always say many desire, many want to be a principal, right? But I ask the question, but are they prepared to be the principal? Many want it, many desire it, but are you prepared? I don't mean your book study, your, your, your graduate school study, your internship. I'm taking it to a higher level. I'm asking, but are you ready? So, so with that said, word number one, purpose. A word we've talked about throughout these 36 weeks often, but yet in a different context today, right? So word number one, purpose. We're talking about your why, right? What is your why? But we're going to go a little deeper with that today because we're talking about in the context of let's prep for the principalship now. Let's start prepping for the principalship now right? So, so, so here we go. Purpose. Question number one, I'm calling this letter A. So be A, B, and C for the, for the, for the, set, for the just for uh, note taking A, B, and C for each of the, um, the 12 words. So purpose. Number one, with everything on my plate, these are self-reflective with everything on my plate heading into 2021. What have I, what have I determined to be my core purpose for leading. Once again, with everything on my plate, y'all got a plate this wide with content that high. So with everything on my plate, heading into 2021, what have I determined to be my core purpose for leading, right? As I transition into to um, elaborating on that question, I looked at my shirt, I'm wearing the Indianapolis Clowns today, Negro Leagues. Y'all know that. Negro Leagues, this is a team that started as the Miami Clowns. They were an exhibition baseball team, and they, they did comedy, entertainment. But they went into the regular Negro American League in 1943 and got serious, but they moved to Indianapolis. So the, so the Clowns show, the entertainment, the comedy, that was gone, and now they were a serious team, but they kept the name Eventually, Hank Aaron played for them in 1952, and that, that that led him into the major leagues, and we know the rest, right? So just want you to know what I'm wearing. Negro League, I, I rep Negro League every Saturday on these broadcasts, right? Now, let's go. With everything on my plate heading into 2021, what have I determined to be my core purpose for leading? See, I'm asking you, you, you got all this on your plate. You got all that on your plate, but 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 that's this. I'm saying when you narrow your focus, when you bring those hands together and you look at that narrow roadway, that, that narrow street, that narrow path, I'm asking you, what's at your core? What's that thing or what's, what are those things, those, those, those few finite things that you said, but this is the reason I do it. This is my core. This is, this, this is what's central to the work. Those of you that know my work and those of you who have heard me before say it, the young men. I only led in, in, in urban schools that were predominantly African-American and Latino. So, so the young men were at my core. So yeah, I mean, the instruction, that was important. The this, the that, the this, the that, those were important. But a lot of that was not this. It was just this, right? So I'm saying here, and I see one of my guys, I got to do a late shout out, Principal J. Gary down there in Birmingham. Good to see you this morning, sir. So, so, so I'm saying here, I had to narrow my, you know, when I narrow my, my, my focus here, I'm saying here, them young men, 
I was define. I was I was measuring myself, defining myself based on the work I did with these young men. Not all that other stuff that we have to do. That was the work. Uh, obviously, the achievement matters. But I said, I want to build young men. I want to build men. I want to defy every stereotype out there about them and show the world what they were capable of achieving when they got the right leadership, when they got the right team, when they got the right environment, when they're in the right space, right? So that was at my core. I'm saying with you, with everything on your plate heading into 2021, what have I determined to be my core purpose for leading? But then letter B to the same word purpose, what is the relationship between my core purpose for leading and the principleship that I envision for myself. Remember we said this session is all about preparing for the principalship now, although you may be a first year assistant principal or you may not even be in administration yet. I still need you and you still need you thinking about the principalship. You have to always project. You have to always envision. You can't just walk your life personally and professionally in real time in isolation from the future, the future has always got to be within your view, right? So therefore, I'm saying to you that, yes, I want you to be the most effective assistant principal you can be. That's why we're doing this. That's why this book, The Assistant Principal 50, was written that I'm assuming all of you have, right? But I'm also saying that 99% of you want to be principals one day. And if that is, in fact, the case, then you have to be envisioning that. You have to be forecasting that. You have to be projecting that. So therefore, letter B again says, what is the relationship between my core purpose for leading, which was letter A, and the, and the principleship that I, in, that I envision for myself? So, so in other words, when you think about that core purpose for leading, how does it correlate to your leadership success later on, right? Is it something that you can bring along with you? And so, so from principal, from assistant principalship to principalship, is it something you can put in your suitcase and then carry it with you into the principalship and then magnify it and then accentuate it and then illuminate it? and then make it bigger, right? Is, 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 is that something you can do? Well, you need to be thinking about that right now. I don't care if you are sitting in grad school and you haven't done a, a minute of administrative leadership, you have to be thinking now. To, so you wanna make that transition as seamless as possible. So you have to be thinking now about the assistant principal, I mean, about the assistant principalship, but ultimately the principalship, because there are not too many people that go to grad school to be career assistant principals. There are people that do, it, and I'm not mad at them. But, but I like how y'all tagging a lot of people this morning. I like that, right? But 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 I'm saying that most of you are going to grad school to become principal one day. Well, you got to be thinking as principal now. So again, that letter B, what is the relationship between my core purpose for leading and the principalship that I envision for myself? You, 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 you got you, you got to go deep on that one. You got to reminisce over that one. You got to ponder that one. And that's got to be ongoing. That's why I said I want you to write these responses down. Not now, but when we're done. If you got some time on your hands today, start recording this. Type it, whatever you do. Right. But then let her see under purpose. This is a big one here. Why exactly do I want to become a principal? See, I'm sitting in the movie theater. I still remember that day. And my wife and I, we watching uh, Lean On Me. And I'm, I'm I'm so inspired by Joe Clark. Right. And I'm sitting there. I want to be a principal. I felt like jumping up and yelling. Ah, I want to be a principal. Right. But here's the thing. I didn't know why. I just knew that I want to do what this guy's doing, right? But I, I didn't have my, I didn't have this yet. It, it was, it was, I was sitting there with this. See, see, see this, that took some time. I had to figure that part out, right? And it turned out that this was my teaching why. So the teaching why became my leadership why, right? So, so the transition was smooth, right? So, so, so I'm saying to you, 
it's the same thing. So let her see why exactly do I want to become a principal? I'm willing to bet everything I own that there's somebody out here watching right now that you haven't really determined why you want to be that principal. Right. You know, you want to be principal, but you haven't considered or determined why you want to be principal. And if you did determine that why, you know, we talked about a few weeks ago, those responses like I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. I love children. That's not good enough. Y'all, that's this. I'm saying you got to narrow that thing. Right. It's got to be that path that you walk. Your why this this I want to make a difference is not a why. That's everybody want to do that. We all want to make a difference, right? But what's that thing that's unique unto you? See, that's that matters. That matters. We got somebody from Albuquerque, Al Albuquerque on here. Where, where is it? I just had it. Oh my God, I lost it. I I'll find it again. But but um, uh, but let's 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 keep moving. So let so that was purpose. Number two, passion. Man, I'm I'm giving you my there's there's Albuquerque. I'm giving you my 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 12 P's, the letter P for the principal effectiveness, leadership effectiveness, right? Or, or in this case, toward preparing for the principalship. And here I'm saying, letter number, word number two, passion. Question number, letter A, what components of my current work am I absolutely passionate about? Hmm. Let me ask you that question again. What components of my current work am I absolutely passionate about? Here's what I'm saying. You you gotta you gotta determine, like, like you get you got all this work on the on the on the plate of the principal. But what is it that within all that work that you said, I'm passionate about this component of it, this component of it, this component of it? I mean, this, this, this piece, this, this matters right here. Right. This aspect, this matters right here. Well, well, with that, I'm asking you in letter B, what to, to what extent have I maximized my skill set in that area? So because, see, we're not going to we, I'm you know, this is I'll, I'll stand on this one. You and I are not going to be phenomenal in every individual, every every every, every small aspect of leadership. There are going to be areas where we need to grow. There are going to be areas where you are just phenomenal, but there are going to be other areas, other components where you need to grow or you need to delegate. Right. I, I keep, you know, my go to is always that master schedule. I hated it. So I got to a point where I found others <laughs> who can do that better. That's I'm, I'm not going to shine as the scheduler. Right. I'm not going to shine in that area. I'm good with that because I will shine in finding the person who can do it because I'm not threatened by someone who's smarter than me. Right. I'm not threatened by someone who has a skill set that I don't possess right now in my in along along my journey. So so I will shine in my ability to find to identify that person. Right. So we, you and I are not going to be at the top of our game in every aspect of the game. There are certain areas we'll be stronger in than others. So that takes me to, once again, the same question. So therefore, to what extent have I maximized my skill set in those areas that I'm passionate about? See, if you're passionate about something, then I would expect, well, you're going to be great at that. You're going to be extraordinary at that. You're going to be phenomenal at that. Right. So so therefore you, you, you so therefore you want to put up you want to put maximum energy into that being the best version of yourself in that particular area. So here you are now, not principal yet, or there could be principals who are watching right now who need to go back and consider that. Man, I love this, I love that, but I'm not even the best me at doing that. Well, then you want to become the best you at doing that, the best version of yourself in that particular area, right? So again, to what extent have I maximized my skill set in those areas that I've deemed that I am passionate about? That's that's man, that, that, that's just critical. But then let her see under passion, how will my areas of passion impact my future role as principal? Oh, man. I, I could do a whole hour on that one. 
fact, I can, I can go further than an hour on that one. Let me, let me let me say this to you. Let me read it again. How will my areas of passion impact my future role as principal? I told you, them young men, that was my passion. I went on and built the whole school-wide program, starting from just being, being particular about the young men as a fifth grade teacher. I went on and built the whole program called the Young Men's Empowerment Program. It was school-wide. Then I introduced it to America. I'm turning off the camera because I, I then wrote this book, Motivating Black Males to Achieve in School and in Life, wrote it back in 2008 and devoted a whole chapter to developing a program comparable to the one I, I developed. But the book is, is, is really a tribute to the program and to my passion. So I'm saying that to say this. I took this, this little itty bitty thing called a passion and magnified it into a program. And once I put it in a book, it became an international model. Do you see what I'm saying? It became an international model because I said, I'm not going to keep this thing at a very low scale. I'm going to magnify it. I'm going to illuminate it. So again, how will my areas of passion impact my future role as principal? I became that guy, you know, built, building the young men became my brand. You know, it, it, it was a huge part of my brand identity, right? So I'm asking you to consider the same thing again, for those of you checking in late, with these questions, I want—I really want you to jot these down. I want you to—I want you to write the answers. I don't want you to write the answers now, but I want you—I don't want you to just treat this. Okay, I spent a good good hour with Kefale, and then you move on with your life. And I want you to hold on to these thirty questions, and I want you to write these answers down and study your answers. Review, keep reverting back to these answers and revise them as you're growing in this business. That's important, and and, and particularly that revision as you're growing in this business. That that matters. Right. Let's keep going. I'm on number three already. The number three is possibilities. I got 12 words of, that comprise this session. 12 words that begin with the letter P. I call them my 12 P's in this case for preparing for the principalship. So possibilities. And here, letter A is asking, is the expansion of my awareness of the principal leadership possibilities for 2021 and beyond? a part of my ongoing routine? That was a long question, I need to read that again. Is the expansion of my awareness of the principal leadership possibilities for 2021 and beyond a part of my ongoing routine? Here's what I'm saying, y'all. It's easy to go to school, go to grad school, study for your degree, and then and then get your be in your assistant principal position or seeking it, knowing you want to be a principal, but not knowing what's out there. Right. It's it's easy to it's easy it, because it happens to so many people. How do I know this? Because these folks reach out to me all the time, including throughout this past week. Like, I, I can't find a job. I can't. I, where are the jobs? I'm saying to you, a part of your work is finding the jobs. I'm, so, so I got let me read it to you again. Is the is the expansion of my awareness. That's number that's the first part. Is the expansion of my awareness. In other words, are you intentional? Are you deliberate about expanding your knowledge base of what's out there? The possibilities that are out there or the possibilities that you may have to create for yourself. So the expansion of my awareness of principal leadership possibilities for 2021 or beyond, 22, 23, whatever it is, are they a part of my ongoing routine? I'm saying to you, that's got to be a part of who you are, the way you network, the way you investigate, the way you research, the way you search to find what are those possibilities for my leadership you got to be thinking about that now because it might not be right there in your neighborhood. You may have to travel a little bit. So in other words, I'll, let me tie that into B and C. B said, am I in tune with the leadership possibilities for 2021 and beyond? I'm asking you, are, are you aware of what's out there? It's, it, you don't just want to, you don't, you don't want to just have 
the book knowledge, the certification, and you don't know where the jobs are, because I'm going to tell you something. Don't ever come to me talking about job shortages. Yeah, I, I, there might be a shortage in your district. But see, when you start interacting with others, when you start engaging with others, when you start networking with others, when you begin to position yourself with others, see, that's part of the that's part of the routine, too. That's the part they may not talk to you about in grad school in terms of how you're networking with others. Where, like, like, where are you hanging at? See, sometimes you got to consider, like, where where do you allow yourself to be? Are you allowing yourself to be with people? who can help open those doors or are you around people that have no influence? So you got to align yourself and position yourself with influential people, which takes me into letter C. Letter C says, can my leadership possibilities occur in my current district? Or in capital letters, do I need to begin the process of exploring my options outside of my district in earnest i got a i got a buddy on here right now i hope he doesn't mind me saying this my my, my buddy assistant principal carlos baggage is in the building out in georgia and 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 this this is about the hungriest young man i've ever met in my life right and he he knows what i'm talking about this this is the young this is a young man carlos baggage find him on facebook he's a young brother doing big time work particularly with the young men as well but he's so hungry. I thought, you know, I'm trying to convince him to slow down. He like, uh-uh, Kefele. And next thing I knew, he's assistant principal when I'm telling him it might take him a couple of years, right? So, 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 so I'm saying that to say this. He traveled for that job. That's my point. He said, okay, it's not where it's not where in my vicinity. <laughs> it's not in my neighborhood. Fine. Let me jump in my car. I'll go to it and build up my experience. And then and then I and then I'll do whatever I'm going to do from there. Carlos Bag, he he doing big things, big things, right? So sometimes you got to travel. Sometimes I, I mean, and 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 I I know that can be tough. I know folks. I don't know, like they're not in my personal space, but they're they're in my professional space. People who drive an hour or so one way for a leadership position every day, every day, because they want it. They're hungry. So they're willing to make that drive. I know folks here, I'm in I'm in Jersey City now, in Jersey. I know folks who, who live in the Pocono Mountains, but will drive to work every day because the opportunity is down this way. And then drive back home, all them hours, two hours back home or hour or more, and then get up the next morning and do it again. Sometimes, see, 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 that's when you separate the ones who are really hungry from the ones who are not. See, see, some folks are just lip service hungry. Like, like they tell they tell you, I'm hungry, I want this thing, but 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 you don't see the actions that follow it. You don't see, you don't see them put, you don't see them showing you the evidence. But you got other folks out here, they are hungry, right? And and they are so hungry, it is evident because they will put forth that, that extra effort. They will put forth that th those extra miles. They will drive the extra miles because. They see opportunity. So, so whatever those extra miles are, that may not be the end game. It's probably not. It's the stepping stone. That's all it is. It's the stepping stone to get to where I want to be. So I'm saying to you, because today we're talking about prepping for that one day principalship, that someday principalship. So I'm saying it might require that, that it's, it may not be in your town. It may be miles away. It may be in the next state, depending on how close close you live to a border. It may be in the next state. But if you want it that bad, you may have to make that drive or you may have to relocate. That's what it takes. So you got to think about that. Somebody might be sitting there thinking, that ain't, that's not who I am. That's not me. I'm, a, I'm just going to wait till the op uh, opportunity opens in my neighborhood. Fine. I, I, I get it. I get it. Baggy said, I, 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 I drove further in the beginning. Yeah, I, I remember that too. So I'm saying to you, consider that, right? It's not for everybody, but I want you to consider it. Let me keep moving. I'm on um, number. I'm on uh, word number four, potential. We're going to get kind of deep with some of these two. Potential. Matter of fact, this is one of them. Real, letter A, realistically, relative to how I see myself now. Again, 
realistically, relative to how you see yourself right now. Do I possess the potential of becoming a phenomenal building principal? Oh, man. Realistically, relative to how relative to how I see myself right now in real time at 1135 Eastern Standard Time in the morning, do I possess the potential of becoming a phenomenal building principal? I'm saying get your mirror. Get your mirror. Look in your mirror. And who and what do you see? Do you see like like in your heart of hearts, within your spirit, within your soul, do you see someone with the potential of being a phenomenal building principal. And if you're grappling with that, that's okay for now, but you have to fix it. So you could grapple with it right now if you're not gonna step into that position on Monday morning. But if you are, you've got to fix that. You can't stay there. You can't stay there, right? You got to fix that. You gotta be able to go to your mirror and yeah. And I'm not saying that you're looking in your mirror and you are seeing that person. I'm saying you're seeing the potential of that person. You're seeing the potential of a phenomenal building principle. See, we're talking about your attitude when we talk about preparing for the principalship now. That's mental. So what, what are you seeing when you see you? Are you seeing the potential to be phenomenal, but then with letter B closely associated with it, realistically, Relative to how I see myself now, do I possess the potential of becoming a school turnaround principal? So it's one thing to be phenomenal principal, but now I'm talking about they put you in a low performing school. They put you in a school that's got a lot of challenges to it. I'm asking you as they put you in that school. And here you are, low test scores, toxic climate and culture. Lack of a uh, uh, low self-esteem of young people, right? Lack of optimism in the building and throughout the community. Do you see yourself as becoming mirrors up? Do you see yourself as becoming a phenomenal school turnaround principal? You got to see that before you embark upon it. You got to see that before you take the first step to victory. Let me say that again. You got to see it. You got to believe it. You've got to internalize it before you take the first step to victory. Man. But then closely associated with that, let her see under potential. Realistically, relative to how I see myself now, do I possess the potential not only uh, of not only effectively leading a school, but building a solid team around me? Man, let me tell you something, y'all. I'm not talking about being that phenomenal edu um, 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 leader now. I'm not, I'm not talking about being that school turnaround leader now. Right now, I'm talking about how you go about building a team. That's important. Do you have the skill set? to build a team. Cause see, you, 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 you can't go in there like with the mindset, me, 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 I, 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 I'm this, I'm that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. What about your team? What about all those smart people around you who are smarter than you? What about them? See, they matter too. They matter too. What about them? See, they matter. I'm saying to you, when you look in your mirror, is the potential there for building a solid team around you? I'm using team two ways. Number one, I'm using team in terms of your leadership team. But number two, I'm using team in terms of your entire staff because they too are part of the team. Never lose sight of that. Never look at your staff as the administration and the staff. That's where the problems begin when you look at it, when you look at staff as the us and them or the us against them. That's what the, 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 the problem starts right there. When you could look at your staff, when you have built a culture in your school where it's you and them are one. We are one as the fist. That's what Booker T. Washington said. When you can look 
at your team and we are one. I just happen to wear the title of principal and, and therefore I act as a principal. But you are my staff. You are the staff. You are my team. I am a part of your team as you are a part of my team. We are one. That's a different school. And you know something? When, when you walk into that school, you can feel that. You can feel that. You can feel the difference. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get all of y'all in on that one, right? You can feel the difference. You, 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 when it's, when it's one against the other, when it's administration and, le and, and staff, you feel that when you walk through the hallway. You feel it. You see it. It's evident. But when it's just one, you feel that too. That's a different place. That's a place where folks love to come to work, by the way, because it's a very pleasant environment to work in. It's, 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 it's not one of those oppressive environments. It's a very it's a very pleasant environment to work in. So keep that in mind. So so again, that letter C, do I possess the potential not only of effectively leading a school, but building a solid team around me and building that solid team around you is a part of leading a school. Let's go to number five. I'm good on time, I think. Planning. Letter five is planning. So, so far, I said purpose, passion, possibilities, potential, and now planning. Number letter one this is another big one. If I am an aspiring principal, meaning I'm an assistant principal, I'm, I'm anything but a principal. What is my plan for becoming a principal? Now, a lot of that answer is in the previous 35 weeks. <laughs> that's, all, that's all that's been about. And it's all it will continue to be about, right? But I'm still going to ask the question. What is my plan for becoming a principal? I mean, have you, have you put the pen to the paper? What's your plan? Or are you just waking up in the morning and saying your prayers and then you move on, right? And, I'm, and I mean, and prayer is good. I pray every day multiple times right but but there's still got to be action that follows the prayer so if you just so so if your thing is just on the plan and i ask what is your plan and then you just you just praying to god for man i hope this principalship drops in my lap god and then and then you haven't put things in place that are based on how you planned i plan let me tell y'all come on y'all i planned to be an assistant principal. I told you weeks past, people thought I was related to the superintendent. Like, how this dude is younger than everybody. How he get the job? And then the next year, I became the principal of the same school. I was only an AP for a year. Hey, man, how how did he how did he become principal so quick with all them other people applying? Because I planned for the position. See, plan. See, sometimes we don't plan, we just hope, we just wish. We just desire. We just pray. Right. But sometimes, you know, oftentimes you got to plan. So I'll pray. But then I plan. Right. And that's not just with my leadership. That's 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 with this broadcast. Right. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got four pages of notes, y'all, but I'm going quick. Right. See, I plan. I plan. Let's keep going. Letter B under planning. If I if I am an aspiring principal. What is my time frame? Oh, big one. What is my time frame for becoming a principal? See, I, I know it's somebody out here watching right now, and, and, and your answer is you may not you may not express this, but your answer is, well, I'm gonna be a principal when the jobs come open. <laughs> uh, that's you, what, you, what, what's that show? Family Feud. And <laughs> see, I wrote. I, I knew. I knew when I was gonna become principal. I wrote that bad boy, man. It was it, it, I, I, I wrote it, y'all. Wrong book. I wrote it. I'm gonna become. I'll be principal by next. I was an AP first year. I'll be a principal by next year, <laughs> and and here's how it will happen. You gotta have a plan, y'all. You have to plan your life, but you but but you've also got to plan your professional reality. You got you got a plan. Right, Law said proper preparation prevents. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that one word out, right? Poor performance, right? 
<laughs> so so I'm saying to you, you got to have a plan. So when so when we shut down today, don't just have don't don't just have a fun filled Saturday. Or don't even do the chores. Put that off. Get your pad out. Or maybe you write on your computer, because most of my writing is on my computer too. What's your plan for becoming principal? What you got to do? And, and part of that plan might be your networking. Part of your plan might be locations, pay, pl places that you go, people that you position yourself with. What you, I mean, you got to brainstorm based on, on who you are, your personality, what fits for you. But you got to have a plan. Got to have a plan. Watch some football today and tomorrow. And I promise you, after each play, the teams will go into a huddle. They're not going to rely on the plan from the beginning of the game in the locker room. They're going to go. They're going to play one play. Then they're going to go into a huddle and plan for the next play. And then they'll execute that play. Then they will go back into a huddle and plan for the for the for the next play. And they will do that throughout the game. And then the game, you look at your clock, particularly on, on, on professional games, the game will be on the air for three hours, but the clock will say it was only running for 60 minutes. Guess what? They played for 60 minutes. They planned for two hours within the game. Y'all didn't hear me. You didn't hear. Even football fans, you didn't hear me. They only played for 60 minutes, four 15-minute quarters. But the game came on at 4.30 and didn't go off till 7.30 because for the other two hours, they were planning within the game. Well, how are you going to become this principal that you want to be and you are not planning within the game? You got to plan within the game. Hey, hit that share button, somebody. Hit that retweet button, somebody. Somebody at home, they ain't even thinking about planning. They just praying. They somewhere on their knees just praying. I'm not against praying. I'm a prayer warrior. I pray, I pray all the time. But I got to follow it up with some action. So they praying, oh, God, I've been working hard for this principalship. I just want you to drop it in my lap that the superintendent calls me today. So I could testify in church that I got my principalship. Man, come on. Now, so, so do that prayer. That prayer is good. That's a good one. But now, what you going to do? What you going to do? You got to have that plan. That matters. See, that matters. Let me keep moving before I start preaching. Right? So, so um, where am I? I don't even know where I'm at, y'all. Okay, here I am. So I said, what is my time frame? You got to have a time frame, y'all. You, and you got to know within your spirit when it's going to happen. Now, if it doesn't happen right then, that's fine. And you adjust the plan. Plans are meant to be adjusted. Those of you who are still teachers, you know you know how to, the lesson plan, it, you, you started teaching at 8. And by 8.15, the plan had to be adjusted because it was obsolete because real life happened. So we just adjust the plan. That's all. Let me keep moving. Let us see in, in planning. If I am an aspiring principal, what is the evidence that I am serious about becoming a principal? Oh, man. See, see, it's easy to say you want to be principal. But what's the evidence that you're serious about this? Right. Because I bet you there's somebody out there. I don't mean to be cruel. I'm just, you know, I'm just keeping it real. But I bet you there's somebody out there. You want it. But there's no evidence that you want it. There's no evidence that you're serious about this. See, you, you got to be see, you, you. That's why that's this again, that narrow focus that, man, I want this thing. And I'm going I'm going to do these steps. Well, I've been watching Cafe Lay 35 weeks. This is week 36. I'm, I'm going to put these steps into place. I got I got the assistant principal 50. I got the aspiring principal 50. I'm, I'm reading his stuff. I'm reading other authors. They got great content and ideas. I'm serious about this thing. I'm positioning myself. I'm making sure the superintendent knows I exist. I'm inviting the superintendent to come watch me in action. I mean, these are everybody don't have the audacity to do that. But guess what? I do. Hey, Doc. Come on over to Ashland School and just sit in my classroom and watch me teach. Don't even call me. Don't you don't have to warn me. Just pop in, cold call. Watch how I how how how, how I teach these students because I'm going to take that and transfer it to my leadership. That's what I told the superintendent, y'all. 
I said, bring the whole cabinet. One day, the whole cabinet walked in my classroom. They sat in the back. The superintendent, the assistant superintendent, they sitting in my classroom. I didn't know they were coming. I don't have to know because I'm not going because I don't need to get ready because I'm going to be ready. See, remember I told you that in the, back at 11 o'clock? I ain't going to get ready. I'm going to be ready. You're going to walk in my classroom. I'm ready for you. That's who you got to be. Let's go. Number six. Preparation. Oh, man. Preparation. Beyond planning. What am I doing toward preparing myself for the principalship? See, see, it's one thing to plan, but now I'm going a little bit. I'm going a little, a little bit deeper now. What are you doing to prepare? That's the individual steps. See, to prepare, but but to add on to it, beyond planning, what am I doing toward preparing myself to be recognized as a candidate? For the principalship. If you missed last week's, let's slay those those bad resumes. You need to go back and watch that. We had a lot of people watch that on YouTube last week. Four, 1,400 people, which is more than my norm for YouTube uh, in a week. So you might need to go back to that. Because I'm saying here in letter B, what am I doing toward preparing myself to be recognized as a candidate? Well, a lot of that's going to be rooted in what in the quality of that resume and what it is about that resume that distinguishes you from everybody else. Right. So 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 go back and watch week 35 if you didn't or, or watch it again if you did, if you saw the live or if you saw the recording. But I, but I want you thinking about what toward preparing myself to be recognized that, that, that the right people and remember something. You don't need to impress people that can't make an impact. Sometimes we try to impress the wrong people. So, so some mid-level administrator that has no influence and you're trying to get on their good side impressing them and they can't open the door for you. I don't waste my time with them people. I mean, if they're good people to be friendly with, then hey, let's be friends. But, but if I'm trying to get a principalship, I'm going to position myself with the people who have the authority to open up that door. That's the difference. So that was part of my preparation. I want, I want what you got. I, I want what you got, but you don't know I exist. I mean, well, let, let, I want y'all to hear that for a second. Y'all missed that. I want what you have, but you don't know I exist, or you don't know I'm hungry. I got to let you know I'm hungry. I, I want you everything you got. I want. I want to be in that position. That's what you got to do. You waiting for the one ads to show up on your computer, and you think they're gonna know you hungry? <laughs> I ain't. I don't even have to say anymore. Y'all got that? Where am I at here? I'm on number letter C. Preparation. Watch this. Beyond planning, what am I doing toward? Of what am I doing toward preparing myself for a principal interview? Y'all ain't hear me. Beyond planning, what am I doing toward preparing myself for a principal interview? For those of you that don't know, you know, I, God gave me something and I just give it away. I, I made these two videos, um, these no, eight videos on, on YouTube. Just go to my channel, School Leadership Thoughts. Go to the rear of the channel and you'll see the interview videos for the assistant principalship. Two in it, two videos. They're 45 minutes each, so 90 minutes. And then two videos for the principal interview. One out, one is an hour. The other one's 45 minutes, so an hour and 45. Then I have the, 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 the virtual interview. That's in there. And then some other things, which, I'm, which you'll go to the channel and see them. Those videos were meant to prepare you for the interview. Now, someone might be asking, Kefele, why are you just giving all that away? I don't know. I guess I'm just altruistic that way, right? So, so oh, but don't even worry about it. Just watch them while I still got them up there before I start charging people. <laughs> just watch them, right? And go get that job and then hit me up later and say, Thank you, Principal Cafele. You have changed my life. <laughs> you know, I'm being facetious, right? The video says I'm being facetious, but over a thousand people called me and said, thank you, right? I don't mind it though. Let's keep moving. I'm on um, 
I'm on where am I at, man? I, I need to like put notes on, put checks on these. Um, I'm on per, oh, okay. I'm on prioritize. That's where I'm at. Number seven, prioritize. Once again, prioritize. Here I am. Let's keep, let's, let me, let me, let me speed it up a little. Have I made becoming a principal, a professional priority? Oh, man. Have you made becoming a principal a priority? Like, in other words, have you moved it to the head of the line? Yes, your family's number one priority. I got that. Yes, your God is number one priority. I get that. But I'm talking about professionally. Your family's not professional. one of your professional goals. I'm saying, have you taken your principalship that you desire and put that at the head of the line? And you say, man, I got to devote maximum effort, maximum attention, maximum energy, maximum excitement, maximum enthusiasm to becoming a principal. I got to move that up. So again, priority, have I made becoming a principal professional priority? I'm putting the mirror up because there's somebody out there. I'm saying this with a smile on my face and so nobody gets mad. Is somebody out there, you have not made it a priority, yet you want it bad. See, the ones that don't want it badly, I'm, I'm not talking to you on that one. But the ones that want it bad, like, like you know you want this principalship. I want to be a principal. I want to be a principal. I want to be a principal. But you have not made it a priority. It's not a priority for you. So, so you so so you you're gonna sit and watch the bowl games today. You're gonna watch the NFL tomorrow. Maybe even throw some NBA in there. And you're gonna do every this and that, this and that, but you but even your job. But land in that principalship, you haven't made that a priority, and now somebody else leaps over you and they get it before you, and now you're talking about some favoritism and all this kind of stuff. Nah, uh -uh. you didn't. Make it a priority. Let me say that different. You didn't make it your priority. You gotta make it your priority. See, that's 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 how, that's how you do that. See, let me keep moving, y'all. So, so that was that that was uh, letter A. Letter B, under prioritize. In what ways have I prioritized becoming a? So I'm asking you now for the evidence. In what ways have I prioritized becoming a principal? What is my evidence? I don't need to elaborate on that one. I'm just asking you for the evidence because, see, I remember I told you I want you to write these answers down. So as you write them down, now my evidence that, uh, that I prioritize becoming a principal is, and suppose you get stuck, that's the point of writing it down. You're stuck because you, there is no evidence. You just been hoping and wishing for the right thing to happen, but the evidence of it being priority is not there. See, here's my guy here. Let me let me highlight my guy, right, Clarence Coggins. Let 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 her let her um let her see. Prioritize. Do I have a narrow focus on my next move of becoming principal? Now I kind of got ahead of myself on that one, so I don't need to spend time on it. But is my focus narrow? See, see, it, that, whatever it is in life, doesn't have to be the principalship, whatever it is in life, you want this, like, like I, I want this, I want to ex excel in this, I want to achieve this, I want to make this happen, I want to change, I want to transform my life. Well, I'm asking you and let us see, have you narrowed your focus so that you can focus on that? Because if, if, if this is your life's focus, your focus is broad, you're looking at everything, man then it's hard to be here. I told you, I'm going to say it again. I was the youngest principal in the district because my focus was narrow. I'm not all over the map. People all over the map don't get it done. I'm here. Yeah, I know things are happening over here, but I ain't focused on them. I'm conscious of them so they don't over overwhelm me. Yeah, I know things are happening over here, but I ain't focused on it. Yeah, things over back here, I ain't focused on it. I'm focused here. But I will, but but I will be mindful that this is happening. I'll be mindful that this is happening. I'll be mindful that's happening because I'm not gonna let the world sabotage me or undercut me. So I'll know it's there. I'm not gonna be ignorant of my surroundings. But I tell you this, it ain't getting my focus. My focus is here. I'm going to be the next principal of that building. See, that's an attitude, y'all. But it's also a plan. Let's keep moving. 
Letter number eight, perseverance. See, we getting there. We getting there. It's 12 o'clock. I'm going over today. Work with me. I'm going over. Work with me. Number eight, letter A. How do I handle being passed over for principal interviews? Man, listen, I could easily cut this, cut this short and say we'll pick this up next week. We, I'm just going to find out who the troopers are, man. You, so, so if you got to go, I understand it, right? But 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 those of you that stick around, I, I I see who the troopers are. I'm going over. This will probably be the longest one, the second, because I did one for two hours early in the year. This will probably be the second longest because I want to be thorough. I want because I want that video to be thorough for people that watch it later. But y'all hanging here with, with the live version. So now I'm saying, how do I handle being passed over for principal interviews? We're talking perseverance here. See, he, he, here's what I'm saying. Chances are you will be passed over. Right. Chances are you will be passed over. But are you going to let that defeat you? Are you going to let that uh, d diminish your 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 excitement for the job? Are you going to let that deter you from pursuing the next interview? Yes, you'll be passed over. It's, it happens. Everybody's not going to be interviewed. So I'm saying to you, you got to keep your head up. You got to keep your chest out. You got to keep your shoulders back. And despite the fact that it didn't happen, okay, well, I'm going for the next one. And maybe that one won't happen. Okay, it's not on me. See, you can't personalize that. You can use it as motivation to get better for the next time out and when you apply, but you can't let it defeat you. You can't personalize it. I, I mean, people come, see, being in the position I am as, as being a very public person, figure in the in the education space I, I hear from a lot of people so there's a lot of people who told i didn't I, I gave up i quit i went back into the classroom you quit i usually write it in capital letters you quit you gave up on your dream you gave up on yourself because someone didn't realize your talent are you kidding me are you serious you don't quit on yourself you don't you don't give up on yourself they're lost that's got to be the mentality their loss, not your loss, their loss. You move on because there are a plethora of other places that would welcome you. You've got to persevere. Letter B, how do I handle not being offered a principalship after several interviews? So now you've interviewed several times. See, before I said you were passed over, you didn't even get to the interview. Here, you had the interview, but you haven't gotten hired. You haven't been offered a position. Okay. That too happens. Hear me, somebody. Matter of fact, I know you are watching this morning. One of those people, some of those folks have tuned in this morning. So let me speak loud enough for you to hear me. Okay, it happens. Don't quit on your dream. Don't quit on yourself. See, it's 12 o'clock and I still got fire, y'all. Don't quit on yourself. It's time to move on to the next one. But if you got interviewed and you, and, they, and, and you didn't get the position, then have the audacity to go to the interviewer and ask the person, why wasn't I offered the position? And be persistent so that you can get an answer so that you can use it for the next time out. So you use that as part of your strategy. And, and someone wrote me the other day on YouTube and they told me, they said, I, I, I focused too much on X, Y, and Z when they were looking for something else. So now they told the person. So now the person can use that toward moving forward. Well, I'm saying to you, it's the same thing. But you don't give up. You don't quit. You don't throw in the towel. You don't raise. The, you, you don't do that stuff. You keep moving. If I could, you know, I, I try and I try to keep the religion out of here, but I'm gonna I'm say this: what God has for you is for you. Y'all, y'all know this. Y'all know that. What God has for you is for you. Maybe that position was not for you. Maybe that position was not meant to be for you. It was for somebody else because the position that was that was handcrafted for you is there waiting for you. I, I just gave you that word. You do what you want to do with it. Like, right. So now let me let me let me keep going. Letter C under perseverance. How do I handle being qualified for a principalship 
when there are no openings in my district. Man, so you qualify. I told you before. I told you about my man Carlos Baggage, right? I said, well, you gonna have to you gonna have to go some other places, right? You gonna have to look. You you gonna have to expand, widen your net, and you can't confine yourself to your district. Now, if, if your life circumstances will not allow you to travel, then I get it. Fine. So you gonna have you you gonna have to figure that out on your own. But 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 if but if you can travel, if you can relocate, you gonna have to do it, right? Superintendents do it all the time. They like athletes, man. You got your you you got your contract for three years. They love you. Board changes. Now they hate you. Now now you go into another state, <laughs> another state, another state. That's just what it is, right? So sometimes we gotta relocate. Let me keep moving. That was perseverance. Closely related to perseverance is persistence. Right. So letter A, how badly do I want to become a principal? So so in other words, with all the challenges that I've been talking about this morning, now afternoon, with all the challenges that have been coming, how badly do you want it that you will endure? it? There's nothing really more I need to say about that. How badly do you want it that you will continue to endure despite the challenges, despite the obstacles, despite the pressures, despite the demands to get it done? Letter B. What is the evidence that I that what is the evidence that I want it badly? So I'm just I added the word evidence. So what is the evidence that I want the principalship badly? But let us see what could possibly prevent. This is a big one, y'all. I got I got I got I got to preface it with that. What could possibly prevent me from becoming a principal? Dot 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 that I have control over, right? So again, what could possibly prevent me? from becoming a principal, dot, 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 that I have control over. So in other words, I'm not talking about you, you know, you got somebody sitting on the other side of the desk that doesn't like you, somebody that's sexist, somebody that's racist, somebody that's whatever, right? I don't mean that. I'm talking about you being the obstacle, you being your own worst enemy, you being your own problem. What is it about you that could be possibly preventing you from landing the position. That means that requires some deep introspection. That requires looking within yourself, finding what is it about me? Is my I mean, maybe I'm sitting in the interview and I don't smile, I look nervous, I look, I look overly confident, I look stern, I look threatening, my body language, I mean, what the way I dress, my, my groom, the way I groom myself, you know, whatever. What is it about me that's preventing me from attaining the success? that I want to attain. That's that's what that's asking you, right? So now let's keep moving. I'm on number 10, Not, I think, yeah. Number 10, pressure. So man, I, I, I've given you purpose, passion, possibilities, potential, planning, preparation, prioritize, perseverance, persistence, and now number 10, pressure. This is a big one, y'all. I, I almost want to hold it off till next week, but I, I'm, I'm just going to go all the way with it. Pressure is a big one. Watch this. Letter A. Do I matter of fact, I know it's late, but hit that share button. Sometimes them West Coast people, they starting to wake up now. Hit that share button, hit that retweet button. Let them know Kafele is still in the building after 12 o'clock. Letter A. Do I apply a healthy amount of pressure, meaning accountability, upon myself toward becoming a principal? Hmm. Do I apply a healthy amount of pressure? Notice healthy amount, right? Not unhealthy. A healthy amount of pressure, meaning accountability, upon myself toward becoming a principal. In fact, for Kim Wilson Daniel, I put accountability in parentheses. So do I apply a healthy amount of pressure upon myself toward becoming a principal? So in other words, I'm, I'm asking you, have you put pressure on yourself? to become a principal. See, other people are not going to do that for you. You can't wait for somebody to push you. That's like a young, that's like a youngster in school waiting for their parent to push them to get up out of bed, to push them to study, to push them to do homework, to push them to behave properly in school, to push them to be focused. That's what parents do. But you look you you sir you seek you seeking the next position, the next level, the principalship and you you need someone to push you. In fact, I hope I'm not pushing you. I hope I'm encouraging you, but I hope I'm not pushing you. 
I want you to push yourself. You got to push yourself, push you to the next level. So you got to apply pressure, right? Put pressure on yourself, self-accountability to be the best version of yourself toward becoming that principle that you aspire to become. Letter B. What is like matter of fact, you take like you, you take like some some toothpaste, right? And and squeeze it. And and event you squeeze it tight with the cap on. You keep squeezing and squeezing, that bad boy eventually is going to bust because you put pressure on it. Well, I'm saying I don't want you to go to the extent of busting, <laughs> but I or bursting, but I do want you to put pressure on yourself to move forward. So letter B, what is the evidence that I regularly, as that word evidence, what is the evidence that I regularly and consistently hold myself accountable toward preparing for the principalship? So I don't need to elaborate on that. The key word is evidence. And then letter C, this is big, y'all. Let us see. Do I handle pressure well? Oh, that was kind of a flip the script. Do I handle pressure well and and i wrote in parentheses because the principalship is a pressure filled position once again because the principalship is a pressure filled position so as i asked you in a and b about holding yourself accountable and applying pressure to yourself i'm saying by the same token do you handle pressure well because because it, because the bottom line is if you can't handle pressure then, then the principalship is really not for you because it's a pressure-filled position. I mean, the pressure is on while you're sleeping at night. The pressure's on while you're at the movies on Saturday, if people still do that, right? It's, it's it, The pressure's on while you're away from school, while you're away from hybrid learning, when you're away from virtual learning. The pressure's still there. If 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 the pipes bust, speaking of the word pressure, if the if you have a pipe rupture at the school on Saturday night, guess what? That's on you. If you have a pipe rupture at your school on hear, hear me, somebody, because somebody might not realize this. If you have a pipe rupture at your school on Saturday, I mean, yeah, you can call the maintenance department if they're the, uh, you know, but they probably the ones that called you unless you got some kind of system in school, you know, security working 24 seven and they called you. But eventually you're going to get a call. You can't sit back at your home and, and, and say, OK, maintenance, you guys got this right. Custodian staff, custodial staff, you guys got no. You got to get just it's 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 like 11, 12 o'clock midnight. You doing whatever you do at that time on a Saturday night. No, you got to get yourself in, in your car and drive your butt to the school. Cause guess what? Because that maintenance guy, it's not his school or her school. It's your school. So even though you had nothing to do with the rupture, I remember those days. I had them. Roof leak, water all over the building. I had to be there. Pipe rupture. I had to get in my car and be there. This off days. I'm not talking about during the school day. That's pressure in and of itself. Then I got to be a part of the rectifying of the problem. Then I got to write a report. So the relaxing evening I thought I was going to have, I'm back at the school. So if you're not built for that, then one of two things has to happen. Either you're going to have to build yourself for it or this is not for you. Because you have to be able to handle pressure because this is a pressure filled position right let's keep it moving let's keep it moving um i'm on i don't know where i'm at y'all i'm on i'm on i'm on number 11 i'm almost done <laughs> patience now now it's interesting because i've been talking per perseverance i've been talking persistence the principal mckeever says she remember them nights <laughs> you know what i'm talking about principal right perseverance persistence, pressure. And then I throw in, and then I went and threw a monkey wrench in there. I said, patience. I contradicted myself. I said, patience. 
And, and you know, going back to that pressure, y'all, I, I used a, a, a pipe rupture. I mean, it could be stuff happening in your community. I don't want to be graphic right now because the world is already graphic enough. But you know what? I, you know what I'm talking about. It's stuff happening in your community, and it impacts your students. It impacts your students' family. You you got to go. You got to be there, right? Whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, you it's it's you you lead. You have to be there, right? I mean, funerals. You you have to speak at the funeral. You you're not in position. They we we want you to be. We want you to speak. They might ask you to eulogize. You can't. You can't. You're not in position to say I don't do that. No. You, you okay? What time does it start? That's all. That's all you got. Right. That's that's part of the job. Right. You might you you the the pastor might yield to you and you're going to do the eulogy. Right. Or or, or or your remarks may be you, you. You can't get up there and do a little two second remark. You got to practically deliver the sermon. I mean, that's 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 what it is. So so I mean, it's, it's it, you know, I don't call that pressure for me, but it's, it could be pressure for somebody else. That's what you got. I remember one school I took. And and the young the, the, the youngsters um, brother was killed like almost as soon as I got there. They called me right away. We need you to speak at this funeral on the sa Saturday morning. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be. I didn't even know the community. I was new to the community. I'll be there. I'll be ready. Because ain't because because remember we ain't trying to get ready. You got to be ready, right? So I just need to throw that in there. It's it's a pressure filled position and it's not just textbook they don't talk about this part of it in grad school they may not even talk about this part of it at the staff at the at the leadership meeting when you're hired this is the part you got to figure out you got to figure this part out right so 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 now let's keep it moving patience <laughs> see that's the balance see here, here here's all that perseverance persistence right but then the patience you got to level it off y'all because see, with patience, I'm saying, have I let letter A, have I figured out the balance between persistence and patience? What I'm saying to you is this. You can't be so hungry that you run yourself into the ground. You can't be so hungry that you have a nervous breakdown. That can happen too. You see, see, be hungry, be fired up, be energetic, be enthusiastic. But understand if it doesn't happen for you as quickly as you want it to, you will still be all right. I told you, I had y'all know I, I had the heart attack. I had it for you. Right? See, see, but mine wasn't from, from this, mine was from diet. But 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 we can get there's a multiple mul multiplicity of ways that you can you can you can suffer a heart attack. One could be that that persistence without having the balance of patience. Because now we're talking about stress, right? So you got you got you, you see you can't let stress overwhelm you. You can't let stress do you in. So you so you, so so stress stress is inherent with being hungry because you want it so bad that when it doesn't happen, you you you, you know you, you're disappointed and that stress can set in. But that's where you have to be so intentional, so purposeful, so deliberate about the patience. Okay, I'm still good. I still got a job. I can still feed my family. There's still more to me than that job I want. I'm still me. See, see, if I don't get a certain job, I don't get a certain engagement as a speaker, whatever it is, I could, I could still fall back on the fact, but I am happy with who I am as a person, as an individual. I'm still happy about my family. I got my wife right over here. I got my, my children, right? I got my home. You know, I got, I got life, right? So, so that's my, that's my fallback. That's my go-to. I'm not gonna let this overwhelm me, but I am gonna go at it. Do you see the difference? I hope y'all feel that, right? Because because somebody on here is watching right now. You so hungry, you letting it do you in. You see, see, you can't get so hungry that you become angry. See, you never heard me say be so hungry, go at it so hard that you become angry about it. You can't do that. See, 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 once once your hung your your hunger and your perseverance and your persistence become anger, you got to go to your mirror and you got to, as Ice Cube said, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. See, 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 you see, you got to go to your mirror and you got to make sure you got that balance. 
See, that's 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 what that is, right? So keep that in mind too, right? Let's keep moving. So letter B under patience. Have I mastered the art of not personalizing rejection, but instead learning and growing from it? Oh man. See, so so if you don't hire me, I, you you ain't gonna break me. You you didn't hire me. All right, I ain't broken. I'm still solid like 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 my finger. I'm solid. Right? You, you, like my I'm solid. Right? Put on that that put on that Ashford and Simpson song Solid as a rock. You ain't breaking me. I didn't get the job. I'm going to be slightly disappointed, but you ain't going to break me. Matter of fact, let's go further with that. Ain't nothing going to break me. So and I'm I'm saying I'm not talking about me now. I'm talking about you. Right. Monica Stokes said, repeat it. Ain't nothing going to break me. So you can't let something break you. Some of y'all, you don't get what you want and you broken down. You let it break you like 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 like. Oh, man, I wish I had a pencil because I ain't snapping no pen and have 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 ink all over the place. <laughs> I don't have a pencil. Nobody has pencils anymore. Right. So. I got all ink and I ain't doing nothing for effect that I got to clean up later. So pretend I got a pencil. Bam! You you can't let that break you. That's what I'm saying. Stay solid as a rock. And now plan for the next one and you know what you got to do differently. That's all. That's 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 how that works. Right? That's that's how that works. So let's keep moving. Oh man, I got see. I'm so hyped into this this particular session. I can't even keep up with where I am. Um, here I am. Let us see. Patience. Do I have a handle? Oh, this is a big one, y'all. <laughs> Do I have a handle on my own mental stability when rejection occurs? It's essentially what I just said. Do I have a handle? on my own mental stability when rejection occurs. See, you got to remain, that's we talking about your mental health now. Matter of fact, speaking of mental health, and some of y'all might know, the latest edition of, of, of um, let me cover my address if it's on there, the latest edition of um, Education Leadership ASCD, I'm in the descent, this, I'm in this issue, December, January on mental health it's called the Mental Balancing Act for School Leaders. I made the top 10 for most read articles for 2020, and I just wrote it. It's just in the last month of the year. So that's, a, that's, that's big for me. I'm proud of that. So if you don't have it, it's on the ASCD.org uh, website. You can click it and watch it. They made it free. I don't know if it, they spilled it into January or not. Go on and see and check that out if you haven't read it yet. I'm on the last word. Last word. Positivity. Once again, positivity. Letter A, and I'm going to keep this short. How do I maintain a positive attitude in my quest for the principalship despite the challenges of landing a position? I don't need to say anything on that because I've been saying variations of it all day. Letter B, how do I maintain a positive demeanor in my quest for the principalship? So now it's, I'm not talking about the attitude. I'm talking about your essence, your demeanor. Cause see, if you if if you're angry, if you're broken, the people in your life they see it. The people in your circle, your space, your world, including your work world, they see it. Your your demeanor it shows. You got you got to still maintain yourself. And then let us see, how do I maintain a positive outlook when in reality I currently have no leads? So I'm saying to you, everything I said about being broken, there are no leads right now. You'll create those through everything we talked about, but your outlook still has to be positive. Your outlook, and, and if, I hope I said the word positivity for number 12, those last three I just read. Your outlook has to remain positive, despite the fact that things are not going the way you want them to go. You still have to keep your outlook positive, right? So again, how do I maintain a positive outlook? outlook when in reality i currently have no leads right and that's that that's that introspection again looking back at you i'm somebody i matter i have a ton to offer 
and it, and it just didn't happen at that school, but there's another neighborhood of children who will benefit from everything I have to offer. So you gotta keep reminding yourself of how great you are, right? So look here, y'all. Again, those words, I said purpose, passion, possibilities, potential, planning, preparation, prioritize, perseverance, persistence, pressure, patience, and positivity. I'm, I'm, I'm strongly encouraging that at some point today, tomorrow, but sometime soon while it's fresh in your mind, write your answers down. Be extensive with your answers and refer back to them regularly. Go back to them, revise them as you, as you grow, but make them a part of you, right? Kim Wilson Daniel is probably still hanging out and she'll have the notes on the screen. I'll repost them myself as well as she does and others share it. So they'll all be out there on Twitter and Facebook, right? So my parting question for you is, Am I doing all I can to prep for my future principalship? Once again, am I doing all I can to prep for my future principalship? Chapter five next week, I'm going back to the book. Next week, I'll be right in here, the assistant principal 50. Thank you all for keeping this book in the top um, 100 on Amazon. And this one has been hanging in that top 100 lately too, the aspiring principal 50. So get them both. Get them both. And while you're at it, Get the other two. Is my school a better school because I lead it? And the principal 50. They're all on Amazon. They're all on ASCD.org. And then the uh, um the the uh the, the equity and social justice 50, my newest book is coming in May, but we'll talk about that one later on. Um, make sure that you visit principalcafele.com. And by the way, those of you that because some of y'all you asked me, how do I book you to come to my school? Very good question. That's a very good question. You simply go to principalcafele.com and look at all my workshop offerings, keynote offerings, and then send me an email and I'll send you all the information you need. So principalcafele.com, I would love to come to your school and speak to your, your, your staff. You know, I talk to teachers primarily. So talk to your teachers, talk to your leadership, talk to whomever. Talk to, you know, just you talk to your parents, talk to your students. Just go to principalcafele.com and visit the website, see what I got, and then send me an email and we will make it happen, right? Uh, lastly, subscribe to School Leadership Thoughts on YouTube. Subscribe to School Leadership Thoughts on YouTube. Keep on wearing this. It's it's 2021, but the issue did not leave us. It, we it didn't become a, a, like 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 a new reality. The same reality followed us into 2021. So wear this. Get your diet on. Get your exercise in. If you've been on following me on social media, you know I've been putting in three miles every day. Right. I'm trying to live. I'm trying to stay healthy. So I got to do what I got to do, even though it's freezing outside. I'm still going to do it. So with that said, folks, I appreciate you being here for the start of a new year. I wish you a, a phenomenal new year. Right. Make it your best year ever. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. And then we'll see you next week. Peace. Flip it backwards. Peace. Put them thumbs up, thumbs up. And then cock that fist back with me and count to three. One, two, three. Bam! I'll see you next Saturday, 11 o'clock Eastern. Thanks for being here.